All right, Shalom. I'm going to start off by giving all praise and glory unto you. How about Shema, 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 Kakodash, the bonus of the Tosna, of this great millstone. Shalom, I'm to out there pushing the word of sincerity and in truth. Yeah, I wanted to um, basically just touch on the, the scriptures and the power of the, the Most High, you know, because um, I was, uh, was on the site the other day and I seen a, um, I was on Instagram, matter of fact, you know, and I seen a, a post that said, the disasters in Kentucky destroyed the hell out of a church. The rooftop shredded and all the Bibles were intact. And if you, you know, look up that article or see it, you'll see all the Bibles actually standing right, you know, behind the, uh, you know, the, 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 you know, the sitting stations where everybody's located, you know. And I thought that that was a uh, spiritual, you know, and what I was when I was meditating on it, I was like, you know, that happened before. You know, that's not the first event that I've heard of where a disastrous event takes place. And the only thing that's standing firm is the actual Bible. You know, a book that's, you know, in in, in the flesh, a, a book crafted and created, you know, on paper, you know. But in the spirit, you know, the spirit of the Lord dwells within that book and it's showing time and time again. And I actually fell into this article. It says, while there are so many miraculous stories of Bibles surviving disasters, it says when scriptures make it through flood or fire, we see signs of faith that endure. Um, and they have a, a few events that actually took place where, where individuals, you know, had, uh, you know, fires that took place or or floods and the only thing you know that actually stood intact was the scriptures here's another one the deadly fire and deadliest fire in u.s history and the bible that survived a baby a bible found open the psalms 107 6 and 107 was one of the few objects to survive the deadliest fire in united states history come on man is that by coincidence now we understand that paper is is one of the easiest elements that can uh, get ignited you know so how is it that this book sustained through such an aggressive fire that, quote unquote, the deadliest fire um, in, in American history, United States history? Because this is the book. The Holy Bible is the word of Yahweh by Shema Washai. And those that have eyes to see and ears to uh, hear, you know, the, 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 the spirit to discern can recognize and pick up on that quickly, you know. But it says when the smoke cleared, little was left intact. It was almost as if a town had never even existed there some broken china and a tabernacle survived the inferno so did a bible the good book was charred by the flames and petrified by the intense heat but found intact and open to psalms 106 and 107 yeah so that's spiritual you know like i said this isn't the first event that that took place it's actually scores of events you know it's it's, it's kind of like a phenomenon that takes place but you don't have it being pushed out on major media broadcast you know because it'll show that this word you know is that book and i'm trying to scroll down if, uh because i've seen a lot of them they actually had a actual page you know with uh you know all kind of stories that took place about uh you know bibles actually you know sustaining through these different dr drastic events you know and um I just used that. Uh oh, here's another one. Amid the tornado record in Mississippi, this is August, January 25th, 2017, a Bible is left untouched. When a tornado battered southern Mississippi over the weekend, it yanked trees off the ground and tore through buildings at Williams, William Carey University. When staffers combed the campus, sifting through the damage, they said they happened to. They happened upon a stunning scene, an open Bible on the pulpit of the campus church, undisturbed by the surrounding debris. You see? The open page from Psalms 46, the staff has said, read, The Most High is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. So there you have it, man. You know, and if you can't discern and you don't, you know, have the ability to see and recognize that this is the word, and this then the word is actually not for you. The scripture says that in Romans the third chapter. So the hell what if, if you don't believe? You know, that's not our, our job to make unbelievers that don't stiff neck unbelievers that that you know reject the word to believe. 
it's for the ones that's willing, the unbelievers, you know, converting the, the souls of those that actually want to hear, learn, listen, and embrace the, the facts, the truth of Yahweh Shemal Rashad. This is an opinionated, all right? This isn't our assumptions and our personal subjective beliefs. No, this is the truth. All right. And it's going to show itself more and more. Hell, I just seen a, art, a, a video, matter of fact, take place of chariots, you know, hovering. You know, today, of course, they, they do it all day on, on an all day, every day basis. But most people don't want to acknowledge the facts. So this is Psalms 12 and 6. The word of the Lord are pure words. As silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. All right, so Yahweh by Shemel Shah's words are pure. All right, and they show themselves as being faithful and true. And that's why the scriptures speak about no, you can't couple the Bible with any other any other book. We always go into the Kib Kibra Negas, we always go into the Egyptian Book of the Dead, you know, all these different um co you know, codexes and books, whatever you want to call them, these different uh publications. Religious publications, they 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 can't compare, all right. You know they might have certain elements, uh, or certain points, but that doesn't make it the full truth. The Bible is a book of wisdom, a book of history, a book of prophecy. None of those books have prophecy, all right. Amongst so much other things, all right. A Bible, a book of laws, you know, statutes and commandments, so on and so forth. That's why it says that if you know, if they don't speak according to this law and this testimony, it's because there's no light in them, because they don't have the truth. Isaiah 34 and 16. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. No one of these shall fail, none shall want in her mate. For my mouth it hath commanded, and in spirit it hath gathered them. Right, so the scriptures speak about, you know, check things out in this, in this book. All right, if you're a believer, you should step up your, your, your belief, of course, by studying as it is written, 2 Timothy 2 and 15, study to show thyself approved, Revelation, the first chapter, blessed to see that reader, you know, because this book will grow your faith. It'll grow your belief. And as you scope and look around, you start to see biblical prophecy take place on a, um, you know, in the physical and in, in real time, you know, and I didn't want to make this long. I just wanted to actually, you know, drive home that point of those Bibles laying intact, you know, showing that the most High's word above all, whenever, when all hell breaks loose, you know, you know, that book, you know, or in the men, you know, that actually believe in that book, you know, that that's the real faith. But that's the real kicker, you know, because when all hell breaks loose, you know, we might not have access to actually just read, sit down and read. It's time to install these words in our spirits now, you know. So when all hell breaks loose, we'll be intact as the word has shown itself to be durable through these different disastrous events. You know, so hopefully, brother Ed Father, I'm going to end it by giving all praise and honor and glory unto you. How about Shemal Bashar, Shemar Kakodash, double honor to the Apostle of the Great Millstone, Shalom Amakim.